I'm going to start. Can you see it, right? Yes, perfect. Okay, well, um, well, first of all, uh, sorry for the last minute change because I was, uh, no, I was programmed for for tomorrow, and I and finally due to like a flight change, I have to travel tomorrow, so I had to ask uh, Carlo to to change it. So sorry for that last minute change, but I hope. Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna talk about first a very brief introduction about um, um, well some of the concepts that are guiding our work uh, as carlos said we are uh, well we are let's say like uh, we are uh, i'm architect by education but uh, as soon as i left uh, the the school i i started working in uh, i mean mainly in 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 the outdoor environment and that transformed us from being, let's say, like pure architects into something like more mix in between different disciplines. And this is something that, for example, the education I had, which is, I think, is similar to the education architects receive in, in, in Italy. Uh, the education I had in Madrid is very focused on, on the architectural field. And then uh, 10 years ago, I, I um, started uh, I don't know, being part of, of uh, I traveled to the US, I started teaching there. And I also discover like other disciplines that are, in, while in general, for example, in Spain and, 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 and Italy, architecture is the umbrella for uh, you know, everything related to the city, uh, to the outdoor landscape. Uh, to the landscape design, etc. Uh, well, there are other other parts of, in the world in which there are like, I mean, these kind of disciplines are separated and they have their own kind of background of studies, etc. Which I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think that's 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 better. But in a way, I learned to differentiate completely one one field from another. So the, in the case of landscape architecture or urban planning or urban design, uh, to have like a deeper knowledge on, of, of each of these disciplines. While before I had like, which is not bad also, you know, there, there are always kind of uh, uh, good and bad things about that, which is, uh, no, uh, a more kind of holistic approach from the point of view of architecture. No? Um, what is important for us is this idea, no, what, I'm, I'm, what is marked here in red, no, this idea of the urban social design. Now, these three words which are describing uh, a lot, uh, let's say, our focus uh, when we are working in, in the city. So it's this idea that the, the the design and the urban words and in between the social world, um, which is always uh, there behind uh, everything we are doing to transform uh, uh, our the cities we live in. Mm -hmm. So, and this is also uh, let's say an approach on how now from this kind of perspective of. Uh, watching the city, looking into the city from, uh, I mean, the architectural object we believe is more interesting to, to, to you know, from the in, indoor spaces to the outdoor environment, we think is like a, a better way to focus. Uh, and this is a, a part of, an, you know, like, a, well, it's not an emergent, but it's something which is with us in the last 20 years, which is paying much more attention from, uh, you know, architects pay much more attention to what was the mean of the city. So in this case, we are interested in looking into the architectural uh, uh, part of the city, but in a, in a let's say, a context. Uh, and this is part of the environment. I know you are dealing, you know, as Carlo uh, told me, you are dealing in this um, in this course about, um, I mean, the interest in public spaces, but also public spaces uh, melted with the idea of water, how to use water in public spaces. And, and uh, I mean, this is also part of our interest, and you're going to see that in different projects. But below, uh, you know, the idea of water in public spaces is the idea of public space by itself. You know, this I always talk about this kind of these very first two meters in which many interesting, the most interesting things in the city happen, which is all the connections. You no, know? this is a layer 
that we usually removed from our, let's say, uh, projects is like the social part in which all the, the connections, the most, maybe the most interesting connections that affect the city, but also affect uh, many of the most important layers that for our work is this, uh, you know, this moment you know, in which people is kind of interacting in that uh, outdoor space. Also, you uh, know, from this, um, I have confronted here in this slide on the left, you no, know, how we usually see the city from the Google, uh, you no, know, Google Maps or Google Earth perspective. Just paying attention to geometries and infrastructures, building objects, etc. While I was, I know, I told before that we usually removed the, you no, know, the the right part of the slide, which is the, um, uh, well. The, the social part of it. And this is something, this is the, a scale in which we discover many of the most important things in the city. And that's why also we wanted to, to confront this idea of you know, just experiencing many times the city from the aerial perspective in which we are um, uh, removing a lot of part of the complexity of the city itself. So we also used to, I mean, we. We like to work with uh, not contemporary tools in which we are able to map and to grab the complexity of the city by just adding a layer of, of social interaction through digital means. No? And, and the digital space is also something relevant in our work because uh, we see the uh, you know, the online environment and the digital environment as a new as an, an uh, another layer to be placed on top of the existing reality that can make it even more complex. So it's also another tool we can use to work uh, um, in the regeneration, for example, of an urban environment. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to show like some projects in which you are going to see like these three ingredients, technology, environment, and social in different kind of percentages. But also, well, I usually, when I, um, uh, when I, I lecture, I usually talk about more praise. I have, re I have reduced the amount of praise because also uh, I wanted to, uh, I mean, to make an effort to focus also on the part of the war in, 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 in public spaces. Uh, also, it's uh, I don't know since we are not a big group of people, uh, I think we may have time. Also, if any of you is interested in, um, I don't know, in, in in just making question, or maybe we can we can uh, finish with a question at the end. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump directly into uh, some of the projects. Uh, one of the, one of it, which is this project, is one of the projects we. Um, uh, we started working and we started reflecting about uh, you know, our role in the society, but also our role as as architects and urban designers, landscape architects in the you know, in the city that surrounded us in the first part of the 20th uh, century. And this is, a, let's say, it's a problem that we usually faced in our cities right now. This is the map of. Uh, uh, of the metropolitan area of Madrid, which is, uh, uh, as you can see here, is like a, a, a city with 5 million uh, people living in. And you can see here, well, the, let's say the blue part is the most consolidated part of the city of Madrid, and the, um, the yellow part is the most, uh, is, is extensions that were planned in the first part of, uh, of the 21st century. So as you can imagine here, you know, if you see 5 million people and, and this red dot, you know, an area of the city, which is, it looks small, but actually it's, uh, it's a new development, uh, was a new development in the first years of the 20th century for 20, 26 uh, housing units and 90,000 citizens. So that, that you, with that kind of, Parameter, you can imagine the the big amount of uh, extensions that was being planned for the city of Madrid on those years. And this, not that this red dot that you saw here uh, before, it's this kind of 
uh, part of the city in which as always no we, um, uh, i mean as always in the periphery of the cities, there is this kind of infrastructures uh, framing everything. And as you can see here, it was like the, the early stage of construction of this area in which is, I mean, the urbanism here is trying to melt the older part uh, with the new part, but I don't think it's a very fortunate way of doing it. And always, as you can see here, the very same, um, uh, object which is here housing units with a courtyard inside but um, let's say repeat it all over this is like a, a kind of urbanism in which uh, uh developed by private developers in which there is always profit behind so there is like a, like a very little understanding of what's the real need of uh, of the citizens and what's the real need of us of a city uh, at, at this stage uh, in, in history so as you can see here, this part of the city is being um, uh, well developed with the very same typology of uh, of uh, housing units, which is a, a typology which is kind of taking care of the indoor and uh, let's say what well, not indoor is like the inner spaces, the inner couch, which is a private uh, uh, let's say common space and usually neglecting the uh, the public spaces so in this case in this case the design of the city and the design of the street escapes is just planned for mobility is not planned for the life um you no know, for like let's say like a, the healthy life of the citizens uh, and well we were invited to uh, this and this is something a little bit crazy because at the same time that this part of the city was being built uh, we were invited uh, to rethink you no know, why why it was being built and we were rethinking how to fix it in a different way and and this is the uh, um well this is like a a, a boulevard of 500 meters long 50 meters uh, uh, wide and we started it was a competition uh, uh, between different offices in the city and we started to to rethink uh, you know, as a case study and to produce uh, an urban design for that part of the city uh, uh, in a different way. You know? it, it was a moment in which all this, um, let's say, the sensibility about the, uh, the environment was already there. And, 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 and we have, but we wanted also not to add uh, to the urban environment only the idea of um, um, of building it in a let's say sustainable way but also thinking about how to make it sustainable for the let's say the social layer the social part of it uh, like places in which people could interact in a in conditions, no, the, the, uh, in climatic conditions that are, let's say, um, promoting the social encounter of, of citizens. No, so we took this kind of um, in, uh, place. This is the Jamal Fna Square in Marrakesh, a place in which social interaction is uh, absolutely uh, there, as you can see. But there is, you know, in this kind of uh, latitude, there is always a lack of climatic comfort and this is something we have present from the very beginning in this project no so we thought uh, no we wanted to recreate the idea of the social uh, let's say interaction that we had in the in the previous slide but in in this case we also wanted this idea of being sheltered no? uh, what, this kind of situation that happens under a grown tree which is um uh, no this idea of being outdoors but being protected by you know but not only uh, uh it's not only about what you have on top of your head it's also the kind of the invisible atmosphere which is creating this kind of uh natures that we have in our cities you no know? so a uh, well as always the most let's say complex and sophisticated to tools to create uh, um microclimates uh, in, in urban environments are already there, but we have to pay attention to them and, and to focus on how they create those kind of um, uh, environments. No, In this case, the tree is something absolutely efficient no? with this idea of the seasonal function. 
but uh, but always we had a, the, the 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 problem and the handicap of uh, the trees need time to grow so uh, we needed to think about uh, strategically about this idea of time and how we can how we can manage uh, this thing that is there you know, that we need and we need time to have like really grown trees as is, is like we saw before so we start thinking about uh, okay we can work with uh, with trees but we can um, we can think of uh, devices that can create the microclimate um of the that the trees create when they are grown but we can create that we can think of how to create that microclimate from the very beginning uh, while we wait for the like a big amount of trees that we were planting at the same time uh, them to grow well, these are images of the competition. Where, where, where you cannot see here, we we you see here just the places where we were also planting you know, those kind of marks in the in the floor, in the pavement, which are the the trees that we were gonna plant. We we were planning to plant more than one hundred trees in this uh, boulevard while. Uh, installing these three uh, devices to create uh, a microclimate that was kind of you not know, created the very same microclimate of the tree uh, while we wait for the trees to grow and how we were gonna be able to do it and this is where it's relevant the presence of the water you no know, in public spaces but uh, the presence of the water in a different way is, is uh, you no know, we are used to have water in fountains uh, I mean in different ways you no know, technology is allowing us to to um, include water in new ways in cities but in this case is adding the layer of humidity and the layer of water in let's say in an invisible way but invisible uh, to our eyes but not to our bodies so it uh, and this is something which is with us from the very i don't know history of architecture no? so the bad gears here is with which is the wind towers from the middle east so this is like a, a a reference that were, was very present uh, for the development of this uh, proposal are these uh, artifacts in which the wind uh, uh, comes in there is like a you know with the technologies that were present at, at that time there's like a chamber uh, with wet clothes and the air dryer gets in contact with the uh, you know the, the wet clothes and it uh, you know, it's this uh, idea of evapotranspiration. So part of the the water evaporates and and it it lowers down the temperature of the air, and the you no know, so the air is sorry the air is heavier and it goes down, creating the climatic conditions uh, in the space below. And this is the very same um, and very fast kind of diagram. This is the very same in which uh, you know this these artifacts that we call the air trees uh, are creating the, the microclimate and are adding the layer of water and vaporized water to the uh, existing urban environment so this is the dryer coming in through this kind of uh, chimneys uh, uh, and suddenly they get in contact with water atomizers so the water atomizers uh, here is very important uh, the 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 size of the of the drop of the atomizers because if we manage to have um uh, like very small drops it's easier to to be to vaporize the water and to be like more let's say the the area of contact of the water you know in connect with the with the air is is bigger uh, much more amount of water is vaporizing and is creating this kind of microclimate which is lowering down the temperature of the of the the air and as i said before it's heavier and it goes down creating this microclimate below it's also very relevant in this case uh, how we treat the the let's say in this case we have created this kind of uh, artificial topography in order to be able to keep the um uh the microclimate for the bigger amount of time so so it it so we can avoid like the winds to come in and just um, uh, removing all the climate the no all the microclimate we have created with this kind of uh artificial means so it's 
uh, three is like one vase. Now these artifacts uh, are created with uh, um, a steel structure, which is the same for the three different ones. And depending on the technologies that we are attaching to it, we are creating three different kind of uh, icons or three different uh, structures with three different uh, functionings. No, the the one in the middle is the one which is uh, all of them are using water and vaporized water in different ways. The uh, and we are going to see. Well, I think it's better that we we see uh, how it was built. This was the very first one that was built. This is the one we call. Uh, as I as I saw before, you no, know, the three of them. As I said before, these these are. Um, uh, three different structures, and the, the one in the middle it was called uh, the climatic tree, and then in, on the left is the ludic tree, which is more oriented for kids, and the mediatic tree, which is the one on the right, uh, we, that also has like a like a textile screen inside for project for projection. But all of them have, uh, let's say the same elements placed in different ways. So there's always like a green wall, there's always textile, all the energy produced is balanced and, you know, and, and produced by, by the solar panels and, and the amount of energy we need to make all the technologies, you know, to, to have the technology working is balanced. So we are not creating like more, um, uh, we are not consuming more energy than we can produce by um, renewal means. Well, this is the very first uh, one that was built. This is the solar panels. This is the landscape. You know, as I said before, you know, this idea of the public space neglected. Uh, still, this is uh, and on the right part. We are waiting for the you not know, this kind of square pieces of buildings here to build. But this is the the space given. You no, know? this is a boulevard, and this is the space. This one half of the space because. This is like the, the the area for parking of the cars, two lanes, another lane for parking, and this was supposed to be the the, the boulevard with the nature here. As you can see here is, and I mean, they do not. I don't think these these uh, trees are able to create uh, any kind of comfort outdoors. And I, as you can imagine, this is a a, a, a public space which is not. Uh, I mean, which is not going to create any connection, any social connection, any interaction outdoors, because what you want when you are there is just to, to live as soon as possible, or just what you want is you park your car or to move with your car, uh, and that's it. So there is no any other kind of, um, um, let's say, footprint of what's the meaning of a, of a, of an active and healthy public space in the city. You know? So we started, as I said before, well, canceling uh, space for cars, taking this, you no, know, we, we did a study in which we re demonstrate that the, the amount of uh, concrete and asphalt was magnified for the need of this part of the city, even with all the, and the, the, the inhabitants there living, there was, uh, I mean, the amount of space for cars was magnified. So we, we were able to convince the city to cancel part of these uh, these pavements given to the to the, the to the cars and give give them back to the to the citizens. Well, as you can see here, uh, well, there are all, all this project is also like a, a let's say an experimental approach to different uh, technologies. In this case, we were experiencing fiber optics connected to the lighting environment outdoors. And this is the scale of it, which is, as you can see here, this is like a, a circle of 23 meters uh, diameter. Uh, the the height of the structure is around four, uh, the equivalent to four plants, which are which is the same height that is uh, of the surrounding buildings. So it was important here that the buildings were not, uh, uh, I mean, that were not bigger enough. So this is like you not know, this kind of uh, 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 ecological and citizen kind of let's say monument was part of was as important as the building surrounding and also we needed the sun to produce the the the, the energy so it, it it was it's it's fundamental not to have shadow from the buildings on top of the solar panels. Well, I'm going to try to go faster. Also, at the same time, it was an experimental uh, process in terms of the, the functioning. You can see here these devices, which are 
uh, sensors which are monitorizing the activity and how are how uh, in at the different levels of that space the the amount of uh, temperature is being reduced also here you can see the second one that was built the one i told you which is the ludic one in this case there is like a green layer out, outdoors and indoors in, in this case you you can see here these kind of lines which are uh, again like a different way to to light the environment uh, in this case it is a mix of lid with uh, fiber optics and in this case the water here uh, is 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 created by a by a let's say a cloud of you know we have we have uh, some pipes in the inner part of the uh, green wall and it's creating is vaporizing the water and it's creating like a, a cloud of vaporized water which is going down and it's creating as soon as it goes down uh, it's creating the the microclimate uh, below all all the, these technologies are connected to sensors so um, it are is uh, the sensors are monitorizing uh, on real time the amount of humidity and the amount of temperature. So when it the humidity is below uh, sixty percent, because over sixty percent, if you increase the amount of, uh, it's very difficult to increase the amount of um, humidity that we have in the air. So it's, it's difficult to evaporate more water and to add it to the air because uh, no it, it uh, with more than 60 percent the let's say the the air becomes like more humid and if we try to add uh, humidity to the air is more difficult but also is uncomfortable so uh, we are creating this kind of uh, clouds of um, vaporized water when the uh, humidity is under 60 percent and when the temperature is uh, over 27 uh, degrees uh, celsius no so and it makes a lot of sense the technology to be used in the case for example of uh, madrid because in the summer the usual uh, average temperature is 40 uh, 40 percent which is a very dry climate so in this case increasing the amount of humidity of the air it makes a lot of sense because with a very a small amount of energy consumption we are creating a, a like let's say a big comfort well you can see here what i told you before about the lighting this is the third one which is called the mediatic one the only one that was also creating a a kind of microclimate with a, a a roof no like a very light this is a tensility structure i recommend you to to check for richard back mr fuller which was the 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 guy you know like an american inventor and engineer that uh, first work and discovered this kind of a structural um, uh, system which is very 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 light as you can see here this this um, um uh, cover was uh, installed in just two days so it's a very light and, and it has two layers of um, of textile one on top uh, and, and one and below and the one below which is is made of a porous textile to allow the air to go out and and and, and to create a, a kind of ventilation but also it creates this dialogue between the artificial and the natural this is the printing uh, a picture of a, a historic tree from one of the, I mean, from the main uh, historic uh, park in the in Madrid, in the center of Madrid. So it was creating this kind of game between uh, the 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 artificial and the uh, and the natural. No, well, I'm gonna run because I want to show you also some some. Pre See, this is the third one, the mediatic one. In this case, we are creating, we are trying to keep the amount of climatic comfort uh, underneath. And by creating this kind of depression, uh, at the same time can work as a, as as I uh, as I told you, like as an uh, well as an urban kind of uh, a space to see. There you will see images of of this space being uh, used by citizens. And in this case, the third one, what, what we created was this kind of um, uh, water curtain. Well, it's not work. Uh, it's not uh, let's say it's vaporized water approach to the level of the people and you can see here i mean in this case these are uh, some tests that we did in winter so in winter the amount of humidity in the air is higher so it, it the the water is not being vaporized 
Uh, so you can see it here. If you are there in the winter, in the winter it's not working, no? as I said, because the humidity is, the, the temperature is lower and the humidity is high. But uh, you can see that uh, how in the summer, what, no, what it seems here that you are getting wet in the summer, you don't really, you just hear the noise of the water you no, know, being atomized, being vaporized, and there is, uh, no, and it completely disappear, but it's creating this kind of, um, uh, um, let's say, it's being vaporized and it's creating, uh, it's, it's suddenly you feel the freshness of the air with more humidity and less amount of temperature. Mm -hmm. Well, more images of this, and then when this spread was uh, being started to be used, and how, it, as I said, you know, how it's being used by people. These are images from the um, when it was when, uh, when it was open to the city. Uh, as you see here, it was used in many different ways. Uh, no, this is these are images of. Uh, like drawings we did while we were working in the in the project as a way to imagine how it could be used by the citizens. No? We also try to add this layer to our designs and also to communicate to others how how they could use it. Mm -hmm. So this idea of no in this space the uh, water atomized and uh, the you no know, the amount of water atomized there and, and there in the mediatic one you can see this kind of uh, uh, textile for projections. Okay, uh, well, other things and how people has, here we, we, we found a graffiti saying we want more ludic trees. So things that we were kind of interaction we were collecting. These are images of uh, a couple of years ago during the summer, as you can see here, it's like uh, crowded with people using it in different ways. I know in this case is like, um, a kind of a festival and a parkour uh, kind of uh, a course. Uh, well, many things happening, uh, also a concert, so has been used in different ways, uh, I, you know, as a scenario for different ways. This is another project, which is the second part of this project. As you can see here, this is not our project, this, this was the UK uh, designed by Heatherwick Studio. But I wanted to bring this spread because it is the second part of the previous project, but on the other side is, a, let's say, the opposite um, the opposite strategy of dealing with water in public spaces. No? In this case, this was one of the most successful pavilions in the Shanghai Expo in 2010, but this was the, let's say, this was the, the proposal for the public space uh, uh, no, well, you are waiting here for hours just to have a an experience of minutes inside. You know, it, and in a way, is also a metaphor of how we are dealing with cities. It's like cities. No, the public space is not thought as a as a comfortable space, and this is something we wanted to reflect when we were. You no, know, this is how you feel when you are. Uh, what happens in Shanghai in the summer is like the presence of water in the air is very high. It's like you can have like humidity around 80%, 90% with uh, around 30 degrees Celsius. And in the, let's say the climate is very uncomfortable. It's absolutely uncomfortable. And, uh, and you feel like, you know, a little bit like that. And as I said, we started working in an in a, in a opposite direction, which is uh, creating ventilation to get rid of the amount of water that has the air has uh, under these kind of conditions in the summer. No? So we work with the engineers to create the technologies and the techniques to be able to create comfort in outdoor spaces in, the, in this kind of latitude. And we end up working with this, like the second kind of uh, sequel of the project you saw before, which is this um, this device made with different layers uh, to to provide with content outdoors with this kind of a screen, uh, you no, know, screens that are also uh, removable uh, and that can create by themselves uh, a microclimate below. In this case, as you can see here in the at night, is is like a 
uh, a projection screen, the inner layer of the of the you no know, of this kind of artificial kind of a structure. Also, we are producing. In this case, we were testing how to produce the energy with the wind. Not in the not in the case of not in this case, we were not using uh, solar panels. As you can see here, uh, and the main technology here to create the microclimate is to produce ventilation to produce ventilation to remove and uh, not to create a sense of comfort which is going beyond the amount of water that the the the, the air has uh you know in these latitudes during the summer so in this case it's a it's a fan, a very big fan, seven meters wide and that is attached to an hydraulic system which is um rising and lowering the the fan uh, 2.5 meters you are going to see here like a test of the this is a video in which we were testing in an industrial site how how this is working i mean it's, it's a speed up video so you it's not going to cut the the heads of the people below because it just goes up and down 2.5 meter and this all this is all uh, it, there is like, you uh, know, with this kind of, in a Windows kind of uh, regular computer, you can control all the technologies, like all the layers of the awnings. And also we are monitorizing uh, on real time uh, the amount of, uh, as you can see here, the amount, the different parameters inside the temperature, uh, pressure, uh, I mean, many different parameters that, that are, and we can also, you have, can, can see here, we can use it in, in manual mode and uh, uh, automatic mode, and we can, um, we can control the amount of uh, speed of the fan, the, the height of the fan, etc. Why it was worth to put it up and down 2.5 meters, because we were approaching the airflow below when it was needed with less amount of uh, consumption of energy. Well, you can see here like different images of this project, how we were producing all the energy, how also in an industrial uh, place we were testing uh, the amount of energy produced by these windmills that we designed specifically for, for this project. And well, like more kind of uh, things that happen in, in uh, in, in in expos and also connected to this project we design for the qualification of uh, of the public spaces this kind of pieces that we call it the madrid chair uh, which is made of uh, uh, i mean these pieces that can be attached to one, one to another and uh, well you can create like you no know, a very simple means you no know, just twisting a little bit one piece against the other you can create uh, um, well, different kind of environments, and also in this case, you can uh, no, you can remove this lid here, and you can add water in, so you are uh, creating a kind of a foundation, so you can go up and you can create like different shapes, and uh, also is uh, you know if, when you want to leave like those pieces um, static, you if you add other like the weight of the water. Is, is allowing you to, to be able not to move easily those pieces. As you can see here, it, can, it was used in many different ways. Uh, well, this is another project is not related to, to water uh, specifically. So I'm gonna go like super fast. It's a project, we, a competition we won in the, in the, in the Netherlands, but it's also this idea of, and I wanted to bring it here because it's the idea of, thinking about the environment but also thinking about the the education environmental education while we are building parts of the city so in this case we designed this energy carousel it's, it's called the energy carousel because uh, kids are moving it and while they are moving uh, it, they are producing energy and the energy produced is is at at night is uh, you no know, depending on the amount of energy the kids have produced in the day it's uh, is uh, delivered back in in different colors uh, you can see here while we were testing the mm, no like the construction of the of um, a prototype and this these are drawings of the of the structure uh, uh, it's a, again at the integrity structure very very light the the the, 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 the diameter of this structure is eight meters 
and here you can see how it was built like all the technologies to produce the the um the energy are underneath here like below the center of the of the pillar the central pillar and how people are kind of interacting with it as you can see here no below this um a circle in which you know a smaller kids can sit and bigger like uh, elder kids can can move the structure from from outside and i arrived to uh, another project which is in the periphery of madrid which is also making a completely different you know, is using water in a completely different way uh, well, as you can see here, this is not the most efficient and sustainable way to create, uh, not to use water, like every single family unit with its own swimming pool. This is a, a picture of the context of the project I'm going to show, and also with this kind of weird Jing Jan uh, roundabout. Uh, well, in this case, no, this is, no, this is the, the, let's say, the quality of the public spaces that this um uh, this kind of urbanism is creating and in that kind of context where where social interaction is very difficult social interaction is very difficult because everyone has you know its own swimming pool everyone has everything that is needed to to live you no know, as uh, uh so there is little need to have any interaction outdoors there is mm, almost no need to know your neighbors because this is the kind of the quality space that you have outside which is a, a kind of a public space which is just worth to park your car nothing else and there is no comfort at all so in this case we uh, did a, a competition that we won for this uh, it's a kindergarten and it's a kindergarten, which is, uh, I'm not going to focus on the building itself, but the relation of the building with the public space surrounding. So we convinced the city that we should make a, a kindergarten surrounded by a public space, not surrounded by a fence. And also we wanted to have, uh, as, no, as I said before, it's important for us not only delivering projects that are connected to the environment but also to make it visible and to be able to educate kids um, and to be able to educate next generation of citizens in the uh, you know in being more respectful with the uh, with the environment so in this case uh, well the, the also the, the building is in dialogue with the you know with the climatic conditions by a layer of uh, textile which which you can put up, up and down depending on the position of the sun and the, the moment of the year, etc. cetera. Uh, I mean, the building itself is a very efficient building in terms of energy, but the most important part here is the connection between the relation between the uh, building and the outdoor uh, space. In this case, we managed to convince the city to have like a pool uh, outside but it's not a pool for swimming it's a pool for purifying the water for purifying all the gray and the black waters from the building so all the you no know, all the wastewater produced by the kids kids was being placed in this kind of pool as i say gray and black waters and by natural means uh, we are, you know, we are using in this case uh, the the um, the plants that are usually present in the riverbanks that are cleaning the water, but in this case, in a more intense uh, way, it's a uh, let's say it's the pool itself is a device which is cleaning the whole water and storaging. So the water is being purified here by natural means, and there is like a gravel a surrounding which is you can you from i mean from the perspective of the city is just a mm, pavement of gravel but it's a pavement of gravel which is storage in purified water to be able to use it um to uh to water the, the vegetation in the public space so we can have like a more intense you no know, in a dry climate as is the climate in madrid we have uh, we can uh, water all the plants and the trees and to have like a more uh, you know, an environment uh, closer to nature so in this case these are images known in this this is the presence you know how how we are dealing with the presence of water in this project and these are the plants that are uh, um, you know how we uh, they were these are the plants when they were uh, almost planted in on top of the water 
uh, it's very important this part of no it requires like some months to grow and and they are floating and as they they were needing these kind of pieces of plastic to while their roots were uh, growing to keep them floating but as soon as the uh, roots have grown uh, there is no need for those kind of uh, uh, plastic pieces so as you can see here this is also part of the environment of the site this is this is this kind of pool which is purifying all the water these are this is are the elements to create a dialogue with the environment with the position of the sun etc like some images of the inner part and also how we are trying to extend the you no know, the, the the climatic conditions created in inside of the building uh, outside well some images of how it's been used and i think you no know, as you can see here these are this is a picture taken recently uh, and you can see there, you know, all these plants have already grown. These are kind of three meters high around here. And this is uh, what I told you is this is the pavement of gravel, which underneath is uh, storage in the water to be able to use that water to, to water all the, all the needs of the vegetation in the surrounding. Uh, I think I'm going to finish with two very fast projects because we are uh, like a little bit uh, out of time, like five a bit more than five minutes out of time. Uh, uh, this is a, a two recent project. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, play two two uh, brief videos where you can. Um, uh, this is a project with a competition we won in the in in Florida, in uh, close to Miami, in a in a ta in a city called West Palm Beach. And well, I'm gonna play the the I'm gonna play the video so you can uh, understand maybe even better than with my explanation what this project about where the presence of water is very very kind of intense. Can we dream about urban atmospheres that connect us to nature? Can we imagine merging aquatic activities in urban life? Can we combine natural elements and technologies to provide climatic comfort year round? Can we create a flexible building that promotes entrepreneurship, citizen engagement, and digital interaction? Openshore creates the framework to experience an urban wetland landscape. Enjoy the city while swimming. Discover a rainbow on a sunny day. Connect with others and get inspired. Open Shore proposal for West Palm Beach is based on the identification of opportunities, the definition of actions and strategies, and the achievement of key improvements towards a vision of a lively urban environment. Open Shore addresses West Palm Beach holistically, considering urban, cultural, social, economic, and environmental aspects. In order to connect the urban vision with a coherent design, we have to look into the different places and programs to carefully identify their potential. The new waterfront is an extraordinary opportunity to reconnect the city to the water, making good use of West Palm Beach's spectacular location. The Great Lawn, already a central piece in the city's urban life, will become the urban living room of West Palm Beach. The Meyer Amphitheater will be the ultimate space for great urban events and all kinds of cultural activities. The alleyways will undergo a rapid activation process, ranging from temporary interventions to the development of permanent structures to host new programs. The former Banyan Garage is reimagined as a new focal point for activities, attracting business and talent to create knowledge, cultivate culture, and foster innovation. OpenShore provides a set of tools to reimagine these places and positively shape the urban transformation of the downtown.
Well, this is the explanatory video uh, that was uh, used uh, for the jury. So that's that's trying. It's trying to 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 explain like all the different parts of of this spread, which is the treatment of the waterfront, but also uh, you know, uh, creating urban areas on top of the water and using water not not only as something which is there to see or just to create no as before to create a, a climatic comfort but also to use it and also as a tools for creating you not know, this idea that always obsess us with the you know having connections between people social connections etc and i'm going to show also another project which is under construction right now in the in the south of uh, spain in a city called mala historic city but it's, it's a, a project which is a is you no know, the the as in the first project is also the outskirts of the city is a new urban campus for the main public university the Universidad de Málaga in this case and what we uh, we have tried to create is to, the help of water but also the help of different kind of digital technologies to create um, to bring part of the activities that usually happen inside of the buildings to bring them outdoors and to create connection between these different disciplines and with different people that are connected to those disciplines. So I'm gonna also in a video of three minutes uh, uh, that will that is summarizing the project for all of you. Imagine an open university that integrates into urban life interactive public spaces that promote conversations between disciplines, technologies and digital interfaces that boost knowledge sharing in a natural, bioclimatically conditioned environment, creating connected spaces that enhance exchange between students, teachers, and visitors. The main boulevard at the Universidad de Malaga connects existing facilities and opens up the campus to the public, creating a pedestrian walkway activated by hubs or public squares with learning and leisure spaces, incorporating technology to create an interactive urban environment connected to the digital world, an ecological corridor that efficiently manages resources creating diverse natural landscapes. Pedestrian walkways protected by natural buffers become the perfect setting for meeting up, resting, and relaxing. Through a digital application, users can interact with the surrounding environment and access an augmented reality with academic and cultural content. The climatic and digital hub integrates collaborative learning spaces, allows the interactive modification of environmental conditions and generates all of the park's energy. The hub's canopy hosts technological systems that connect users to the physical space and the digital environment. Along the boulevard, open classrooms are equipped to extend the university experience to public spaces. An extensive network of sensors generate open data that enables climatic research and allows real-time identification of the most comfortable zones of the boulevard. The tranquil olive groves open library encourages reading and resting while promoting and protecting biodiversity. A connected, open, interactive, and green campus an intelligent natural space with positive energy balance and bioclimatic comfort. A positive space where collaboration, creativity, and learning define the urban scene. Okay, that's it.